NASA's new program for human space exploration is called Constellation. For the first time in a generation, we will be traveling beyond low Earth orbit, returning to the moon, and expanding human presence to Mars. Exploration must be taken in steps. Because we learn from every journey, there is a link between every place we go. Before humankind travels to Mars, there's a lot of work to be done. With every mission, we get smarter about exploration, learning the capabilities of our hardware, learning about the environment, building partnerships, and ultimately reducing the risks of spaceflight through our knowledge gained. Taking our journey in calculated steps, Constellation will first travel close to home, 220 miles above the Earth to a floating laboratory in space called the International Space Station. I'm Pam Melroy. As a space shuttle pilot and then shuttle commander, I visited the space station three times. The station is the largest spacecraft ever built. Constructed piece by piece in low Earth orbit, it is the greatest engineering feat humankind has ever attempted. The station allows unique scientific research to take place without the constraints of gravity. But you might be surprised to discover it also plays an important part in our return to the moon, and ultimately, humans setting foot on Mars. The Orion spacecraft uh, is America's next manned spacecraft. So the vehicle uh, is gonna be capable of low Earth orbit operations and also capable of going beyond low Earth orbit. This new spacecraft design takes advantage of being able to do both. It's a very uh, flexible design. Orion serves a need for space station. It, it, it brings crews back and forth. It brings supplies, some supplies back and forth, some critical things with it. But the missions to space stations serve a big purpose for Orion as well. It's, it's you don't want to take the new car out on the long duration road trip the first time out. So from a strictly Orion perspective, we get a lot of benefit from these near-Earth, low-Earth orbit missions to try out the spacecraft. When we go to a station, virtually all the functions that we need on Lunar for Orion will be exercised. You need power generation, you need thermal control, obviously all the avionics, you need rendezvous and docking, which are critical, obviously, for a lunar mission where you're, you're sending a module to the surface and then having to rejoin with it when it returns. So virtually every system that has to be used for lunar is used during those low Earth orbit missions. The normal crew rotation on space station is getting to be a right around six months. Uh, you know, crews will sometimes be a little shorter to that, but it's a unique opportunity in that the crews do stay for months at a time. As we all know, when you put a human into a gravity-free environment, it's a new environment for the body, and the body is a very plastic thing and adjusts, and uh, so your bones start to lose bone mass. Additionally, your muscles also become weaker because you're not using them every day to fight gravity as you do here and even your ability of the body to control itself from a sensory motor standpoint, like how your brain controls the actions of your body, has all been developed against a gravity environment. When that goes away, the emotions have to be basically reset. The entire human research program that NASA is currently working with was very carefully reviewed to focus the efforts uh, during ISS on answering constellation-related problems, answering exploration-related problems. For example, we are actively looking at pharmacological countermeasures to bone loss, to exercise and nutrition as countermeasures to both bone and muscle loss, and specific types of training for the crew to help manage their sensory motor problems. And so Station is a unique opportunity to look at both how the human changes during that time and how, as a support organization, you have to adjust and support those people to allow them to function when they get to the place they want to go. 
building on our experience in low Earth orbit, Orion and its lunar lander Altair will travel over 200,000 miles to the moon. The missions will be far more complex than the Apollo lunar program. Astronauts will be able to land anywhere on the moon, stay longer than the Apollo astronauts were able to, and explore the moon like never before. Well, the moon is fascinating to certain astronomers and geologists because it's an example of a terrestrial planet that never got past early stages of development. So on the moon, we can look at features and processes that have been preserved for three to four billion years and see things that probably were happening on the Earth but have been erased by all of the erosional processes on the Earth. So the uh, moon, however, is like a, a history lesson and a textbook on the early days of the solar system. The Apollo missions were three-day missions to equatorial regions, and they did do some scientific exploration of the areas around which they landed. But in the Constellation program, we're going to the moon to be able to learn how to to live there, to stay there, to use resources that are present to enable our missions and deal with these problems in a situation where the crew is, is further away from Earth. The Constellation Lunar Exploration Scenarios fall into two different categories. With the Altair Lunar Lander, we can set a crew of four down anywhere on the surface of the moon and sustain them for seven days, whether it's to deploy a telescope or perform a geologic expedition. There's another configuration, another variant, if you will, of the Altair Lunar Lander, and that's called a cargo lander. And this Altair cargo version will enable us to deliver large pieces of a lunar outpost infrastructure, like a big habitat or several pressurized rovers or a, a large power generation capability. All the necessary building blocks of a lunar outpost, and this outpost will sustain a crew of four for, for missions up to 180 days. So the Altair lunar lander will be the mode by which we bring the crew back and forth. Um, it will take the crew there, wait for them for their 180 days stay, and then be capable of bringing them back to the Orion spacecraft in low lunar orbit. The Constellation Lunar Program operations will really be focusing in on what are the capabilities and the techniques that we need to develop to master in order to reduce the risks associated with sending humans to Mars. As an astronomer, I have always found Mars to be one of the most fascinating planets in our solar system. Robotic rovers have explored the planet, capturing our imagination and giving us a glimpse at its many mysteries. Ultimately, the Constellation Mission Plan works towards building on this knowledge and putting human scientific expeditions on the Red Planet. Mars is a planet which is more geologically complex than the Moon, and it has had water on it at some time, interacting with it. And we see huge uh, tectonic features and gigantic volcanoes. I mean, the Olympus Mons is one of the largest volcanoes in the solar system, about the size of the state of Arizona. So these features are new things to investigate. And of course, there's always the intriguing possibility that early in the history of Mars, when there was water, there might have been the early development of life forms or something that precursors to life. Human exploration of Mars is different than any mission we've conducted before. During Apollo, the missions were fairly short, three days there, three days exploring the surface, and three days coming back. But with human exploration of Mars, it's much more difficult. It'll take about six months for the crew to get out to Mars. That's about what we do on space station in a crew rotation mission, so we're learning a lot there. Once crews get to Mars, they'll explore the planet for about 500 days, waiting for the proper alignment between Earth and Mars. And when that alignment occurs, it'll take about another six months to come back. So overall, it's about a two and a half year mission. Again, six months out, a year and a half there, and six months coming back. Future human exploration of Mars will be a stepwise progression, starting here on Earth, Earth analogs, learning how to, how to, to test systems and how things operate. The constellation systems that we're developing today will feed in very nicely to future human exploration of Mars. Launching the Orion capsule fits in perfectly in terms of delivering crew to low Earth orbit, up to six crew. 
The space station fits in in terms of being a very vital test bed for human operations in space. Uh, future systems that we're going to land on the surface of the moon, the habitats, the pressurized rovers, the power systems, all of those elements will be, if not identical, very similar to the systems that we'll actually take to Mars. So everything we're doing today within Constellation has a very strong feed forward from the space station to the moon all the way to future human exploration of Mars. We don't have a firm time frame of when we might send humans to Mars, but we know it's going to be a few decades in the future. That means that today's children who are just entering elementary school may actually be the actual astronauts who fly those missions. So inspiring children to pursue math and science is very vital that we, uh, that we keep that going so those children can actually be the ones that explore Mars. You know, that's one of the tasks that NASA has for humanity is to start to extend our presence off this planet. Unlike the past where many of the children did not have an expectation that humanity was moving in that direction, the current generation does. It is part of their culture. And so I think we'll be well positioned for that as long as we prepare them for uh, all the things that are necessary that, you know, we commit to education and, and preparing them for the skills that it's necessary to go there. I think a lot about the longevity of the Constellation program. I have a five-year-old daughter. She has, uh, she has her little Orion mock-up, like many of the children of people that work in, in, our, in the Constellation program. And so I think a lot about the legacy that we leave in these early missions and how that will evolve over time and be the space program that my daughter will inherit and her daughter and son will inherit someday. I think that's where a lot of the pride in, in what we do is, is that we feel like we are, in fact, the folks that are keeping that alive for our children. So we're now looking at a process of human movement out into the solar system, which has more than just technical implications, it has sociological implications in terms of technology development, in terms of inspiration of youth, in terms of demonstrating leadership in the world, in terms of creating new opportunities for economics and economical development in space, and scientific implications. From Earth orbit to the moon, to Mars and beyond, Constellation is taking a vision for space exploration and turning it into a strategic mission plan. To extend our human presence farther than we have in the past, Constellation will overcome many challenges, make new discoveries, push technology, and write new chapters in space history, one destination at a time. Along every planned step of our journey, we will not only try to answer the mysteries of our solar system, but also satisfy our human desire to explore.